In this video, we're looking at forecasting, which is tested in task eight of the Applied Management Accounting first sample assessment. So we're provided with some information. You are preparing the forecast for a retail company. I've been provided with the following information. So we've got our sales trend for the year. Uh, we can see it's divided into the various quarters, so October to December and so on. But we also have, there's a seasonal variation so it's just recognising that uh, we've got this underlying trend, uh, but there is some seasonal variety as well. So if we show that graphically, so we've got the time on the horizontal axis and our sales on the vertical axis. So the blue line there is showing the underlying trend. So we've got the sales made uh, but that's not the actual position though, because we can see that in October to December, there's a plus 14% seasonal variation. So actually the sales are, are higher than the underlying trend. And then in January to March, there's an 8% uh, negative seasonal variation. So in that period, we, we sell below the trend. And then for April to June, we've got a, an increase. We sell more than the trend normally. And then July to September, again, there's a, a significant drop below the, the trend. So that, that's what our actual sales are, taking into account the seasonal variety. Notice that the total of the seasonal variations equals zero. So that's something to look out for, uh, which may be relevant in, in other questions. But in this particular question, we don't need to know that. So what does the question actually want us to do is we, we've done a bit of revision now, but let's, let's answer the question. So part A, calculate the sales forecast for 20x8 using the information above. So for the October to December, well, we need to take the, 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 the trend, the underlying trend of 1680, and then we need to multiply by uh, 1.14 or multiply by 114%. Remember, we said an increase there. So that's going to give us a, a, a forecast of 1,915,200. Whereas in January to March, there's a minus 8% seasonal variation. So here we need to take 8% off. So we're going to multiply by 0 0.92. And that's going to give us 1,600,800. And then in April to June, we need to multiply by 1.09, and that's going to give us 1,978,350. And then finally, we've got a negative seasonal variation of 15%, so we need to multiply the trend by 0 0.85, and that's going to give us 1,593,750. By moving on to part B, so it's then asking us, so due to circumstances outside the company's control, they have moved to online sales only as stores have been closed temporarily. So it's asking us to complete the following statements. So long term plans are often based on. So we've got a selection here of Internet searches, extrapolation or analysis. Well, in this case, we're going to choose extrapolation because that's basically what's happening here in our question, that we've got some historical data and we're just extrapolating our trend. And that's allowing us then, when we apply the seasonal variation, to predict what the future sales will be. But this is based on extrapolating the historical data that we have in the past. So there we are, that's our answer. We're going to be extrapolating to find the, the future trend. And this is going to be more accurate, well, only in the short term, because it's difficult to predict what's going to happen in the future. Now, if we look at a graph again, let's just re reproduce the graph, but let's think about a, a bigger period. Rather than looking at some months, let's imagine that each of these is a year. 
So there may be an underlying trend, but we need to be aware that the, the, the economy works in cycles. So as well as there being a short term seasonal variation, there may also be a much longer term cyclical variation. So here we still have an underlying trend, but we need to recognize that perhaps once every 10 years, there may be a cyclical variation as well. And of course, within each of those, there may be some seasonal variations as well. So we could only really extrapolate in the short term because we need to take into account all the other variations that may be happening. And then in the second sentence, if the shop closure is a short term, then this represents, well, it's not particularly reliable and it's not seasonal either. It's got nothing to do with whether it's winter or summer, does it? So it looks like this uh, temporary closure of the sh stores is a random variation. Because yeah, we need to recognise that even though we may have that cyclical underlying variation and the trend, there may still be occasionally a bit of a spike because of a random event. And that, that spike may be either positive or negative. So yeah, it looks here as if this is just a random variation. And that means that overall, because of these random variations, our forecasts are going to be less reliable. Because... We just can't see into the future, can we? And then for the last part of the question, it says in order to support increased online delivery, an increased number of delivery vehicles be, will be required. Delivery costs are seen to vary in a linear manner and can be expressed using the regression equation of Y equals A plus BX, where A equals fixed costs, B equals variable costs, x equals the number of deliveries made. Well, for the purpose of this debrief, I'm just going to use some different terminology for the equation. So instead of y equals a plus bx, let's understand that total cost equals fixed cost plus the variable cost multiplied by the number of deliveries. Let's call, yes, use d for deliveries. Yeah, because the y and x perhaps don't really make a lot of sense, but if we just use abbreviations for the terms we're talking about, that may be a little bit more clear for us. Now we've got two observations. It tells us that when we make a thousand deliveries, it's going to cost us six thousand pounds, whereas when we make eight thousand deliveries, it's going to cost us twenty thousand. So we can put these two sets of numbers into our formula. So when we make 1,000 deliveries, our total cost will be £6,000. So we still don't know what the fixed cost or the variable cost are, though, do we? And let me just put in some brackets here to, to make that perhaps a little bit more clear. And then similarly, when we make 8,000 deliveries, again, we don't know what the variable cost is or what the fixed cost is, but we do know that it will cost us £20,000. So we've plugged our two observations into the equation that we have. Now, just for ease of reference, I'm just going to call this equation 1 and equation 2. And what we want to do is we want to work out what the fixed cost and the variable cost is. We have two unknown variables and we have two equations, so that, that's OK. So what I'm going to do, look, I can see that the numbers in equation two are bigger. So I'm going to take equation two and I'm going to deduct equation one from it. So that means if I take 20,000 and take away 6,000, that leaves us with 14,000. And then I've got fixed cost, take away fixed cost, so that's going to be zero. And then I'm left over with 7,000 of the, the variable cost. So if I rearrange the equation a little bit, I can see, therefore, that my variable cost, which I have on the right hand side of the equation, must be the 14,000 total cost divided by the 7,000 deliveries. So that means that my variable cost is going to be two pounds per delivery. So now that we know what the variable cost is, that means we can 
substitute our variable cost for that two pounds, can't we? So we can work out what our, our fixed costs are. So we know, don't we, that from the second observation, 20,000 equals fixed cost plus two multiplied by the 8,000 deliveries. So that tells us that 20,000 equals fixed cost plus 16,000, and therefore our fixed cost must be 4,000. Now in this case, I use equation two to be able to do that, but it doesn't really matter. Let's do it again with equation one and we'll see that we get to exactly the same answer. So we've got 6,000 equals fixed cost plus two multiplied by the 1,000 deliveries. So that implies that 6,000 equals the fixed cost plus 2,000, and therefore our fixed cost equal 4,000. So it doesn't really matter whether you use the first observation or the second observation, we get our fixed cost of 4,000. So we can put these numbers into our answer now. Yeah, our fixed costs are going to be 4,000, and our variable cost per delivery is 2 pounds per delivery.